Could you roll call, please? Yes, good morning. This is the roll call for the City of South Fulton work session. The Honorable William Bill Mayor Edwards. Here. The Honorable Catherine F. Rao, District 1. The Honorable Carmelita Gums, District 2. Present. The Honorable Helen Z. Willis, District 3. Present. The Honorable Naima Gilliard, District 4. The Honorable Corey A. Reeves, District 5. Accounted for. The Honorable Councilmember Khalid, District 6. Here am I. And the Honorable Mark Baker, District 7. Present. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Okay, uh, Mr. Craig, before we move into the, the body of the meeting, I would like for you to once again to uh, explain the no rules of engagement for these meetings uh, as we move forward. Would you do that now, please? Yes, sir. Uh, pursuant to action taken by the council at the last regular meeting, the council agreed to limit uh, council members' comments to three minutes uh, per instance, and uh, presentations will be 10 minutes per presentation. Okay. Uh, I would ask also at the council, I would ask that after this work session that uh, we would we would go into executive session, if that's all right with everybody, but I'll I'll wait the motion at that time. Okay, uh, Mr. Kirk, would you call the first presentation, please? Yes, sir. The first presentation is the historic Campbellton Crossroads framework plan by Pond and Company, uh, CDRA. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Um, I will give an introduction to um, our first presenter. I want to give a, just a little insight to you um, just to understand what exactly you're having before you. So uh, we received three um, CDAP programs and one LCI program uh, where we've either partnered with other governments or directly received. Um, the Atlanta Regional Commission will tell you that's almost unheard of or very rare to have that many um, considerations in one application cycle. So congratulations to the city of South Fulton for receiving that many programs. And so today, to give you more insight on what we've done over the last year for these projects, Mr. Andrew Kaur with Pond and Company will give a presentation as well as Jared Lombard with the ARC. So Andrew, if you would, please. Yes, thank you, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Um, well, glad to be here today. Um, as a note, we had our final public meeting last evening for this project. It had uh, 27 attendees. It was very well attended and very positive. And the outcome of this last presentation, the common theme was how do we get started? How do we move forward? And how do we collaborate uh, between the two cities? So it was a very positive meeting. Um, if you will go to the next slide, please. Uh, Shayla, I already mentioned several of these, uh, the, the, where the origin of this process came from. But again, the focus of this project was on um, the historic Campbellton community, which straddles both uh, the cities of South Fulton and Chattahoochee Hills. And the goal was to reestablish a historic downtown and look at economic development opportunities through a variety of lenses. Next slide. Next slide, please. Um, so as you can see, this is a city area map. Um, again, it straddles both communities. And so we were really um, looking at how to consider a, a number of the different environmental features. How do we consider uh, MRPA and its impacts from the Chattahoochee River, a, a variety of tributaries, and uh, the different development patterns in both communities. Next. Uh, this is our progress to date. Um, we've had a number of different um, interactions. It's been very successful. As you can see, we've, we've taken a number of different steps to engage people at a variety of levels, whether it be virtually through Zoom, uh, we had a public charrette, a three-day public charrette that was very successful, multiple core team meetings, uh, as well as online a presence and um, public presentations. And we also did a social distance pop-up workshop in July, uh, which brought a lot number of different people together. Um, the outcome of the plan were these six design principles that you can see on the screen. Uh, they focus on everything from environmental sustainability uh, to creating a, a sustainable, viable place that is thriving economically, socially, and recreationally, uh, but the focus is on building upon the history of the project and bringing the two communities together. 
Next slide. Can you to the next slide? Yeah, there we go. Um, so again, this is the vision statement we came up with. And what I will tell you, and you can read it on the screen for yourselves, but what we've told everybody and we'll continue to emphasize is, this is a 10, 20, 30 year plan. This is going to take a lot of uh, um, uh, different uh, avenues to get this development going. So it's a long-term vision, but the goal is to create a thriving crossroads community. And we really think this is a model project that you can institute at other crossroads and, and thinking about how you deal with these historic communities that really make up the South Fulton region. Next slide. So this is the overall master plan framework. Um, this is what we've told everybody. This is one possible development scenario. Again, uh, this is all, a lot of this is private land. So our goal here is to really showcase what how it might develop. Um, but there are a number of different iterations this could take over time. And while the project boundary is the project boundary, which you see in black on the screen, the reality is you could extend, you, you could you know, modify the boundary and take this development pattern, excuse me, and expand it as needed. But the goal is to balance the open space, the rural landscape, and the idea of the clustered village style hamlet. So next screen. Uh, we developed three districts. Uh, the one, the community hamlet is what you would think of as kind of a traditional village. It's the economic center, uh, kind of the, uh, of the entire community. It's surrounded in the orange by what we call as transitional district, traditional living. The large orange area to your on the left hand side of the screen is part of the Buchart Farm property. Uh, this is entirely within the city of Chattahoochee Hills and is currently being developed as a separate private development, but was considered as part of this project. Um, and then you have the rural living district, which really looks at the idea of kind of, you know, larger tracts of land, uh, two to 10 acre uh, tracts of land that are consistent with the rural nature of the community. Next slide. This is the first community Hamlet district. And the goal of this, I won't go into all the details about the district and, and every nuance, but the goal was to create a vision where you could tie the zoning and, and the land use together. So you have a snippet of what it could be. You know, it's really a precursor to some type of hybrid zoning should the city move forward. But it gives a developer or a private a property owner a vision of what it could look like, um, looking at everything from building height um, to, to how you address uh, bioretention and stormwater improvements, um, how you address uh, setback lines. But the vision here on the picture on the right really gives you a sense of that kind of community oriented feel um, for a variety of users, whether you're biking, walking, or driving your golf cart. Next slide. Whereas the village hamlet was very much the economic center with boutique shops and restaurants and maybe loft style living above, uh, above retail, transitional district begins seeing a little a greater variety of architecture, everything from detached homes to small businesses, um, single family homes. And again, the focus is on maintaining um, you know, proper heights, um, thinking about setbacks, still limited setbacks, um, but also uh, making it more of that transition to that more rural, the rural character. As you can see in the imagery, as well as uh, on the side, you can see the idea that it's really trying to create that village feel, village feel and have good aesthetics. We want good quality development in this area. So next slide. Finally, the rural living district, much more rural, maybe much more consistent with what you might see out there today. Uh, two to 10 acre lots, farmettes. You could even have some areas with maybe some crops. Uh, but again, this area is focused on uh, maximum buildable area that would be scalable based on the size of the lot. Uh, so it's consistent and you would have consistent design. As part of the overall plan, we've given some image preference of what those buildings and architecture might look like to kind of inspire private property owners and or developers should they choose to come in and redevelop uh, the intent of the study area. Next slide. We looked at a number of different transportation and mobility improvements. You can see the four we, we list here, right sizing of the roads, streetscape typologies, operational improvements and mobility improvements. Next slide. Just an example of right sizing of the roads, um, thinking about the width and size of these roadways, especially Campbellton Fairburn Road, which is a very wide road, 
as is Cascade, Palmetto, and we acknowledge this in the plan on how to work with Georgia DOT to create a road that still feels like both sides of the road are, are, are connected together. Next slide. We also looked at operational improvements, um, but again, this idea of whether you introduce roundabouts, as you can see the images with the circles to slow traffic, this is a big concern of, of folks, and, and to improve operations. There may be in the future needs for stop controls, such as stoplights and signs, as well as hawk crossings for pedestrians and, um, and greenway connections. So trying to think it holistically. Next slide. Thinking about typologies, again, this idea of these different streets within the development are all going to look slightly different, but have consistent themes, which include wide sidewalks, parallel parking, and um, are linked directly to uh, the development of the area. Next slide. And again, greenways and multimodal transportation. This was a big part of the plan as well. How do you begin connecting people throughout the community? So you have access to Campbellton Park, you have access to the river, and you don't have to get in your park, car every time you want to go somewhere and visit places and for health and wellness. So that was a big part of the plan as well. Next slide. Uh, we came up with five different strategies, uh, and there's a number of different individual strategies, but kind of five overarching strategic themes, which include historic preservation, infrastructure improvements, transportation and multimodal improvements, development and conservation, and urban form and regulatory guidelines. Out of that, we developed four catalyst sites or projects we think are really important. Next slide. This is the catalyst map to give an idea where these areas are. Um, you can see there is the intersection, which is, I think, a, a key element. You have the Crossroads Trail, the Community Art, which is the former Methodist Church, which has been recently purchased, and Campbellton Park. So these split both. These are some in the city of Chattahoochee Hills and some in South Pole. Next slide. Obviously, the intersection is a large one. We believe uh, that it's uh, important to have uh, we think to address the roundabout early on, we think this is one of the major infrastructure challenges over time and begin looking at this, how you fund this locally potentially um, so you can accelerate the project timeline. Next slide. We also think the idea of multi-use trails connecting, uh, especially to the east and Les Jardins and Hampton Oaks, these subdivisions to the east, you know, just east of Butner Road and bringing them and connecting them closer to where, uh, to the Chattahoochee River um, into this area um, especially as it relates to the overall uh, Riverlands project, which is getting a lot of momentum. So we want to make sure other parts are connected to that and, and we're thinking about that. Next slide. The Cultural Center. We think this is a real synergy between both communities uh, that can begin at the historical commission level and will, will generate advocates. But the goal long term is to turn the Methodist Church into a cultural center. But right now you have the opportunity to do a lot of different activation in that space. A lot of bike riders use it on the weekends. It's a, it's really, it's really a gateway into the Campbellton community and a, a landmark that should be preserved. Next slide. Okay, being fair to everybody, um, your ten minutes. Yes. Been, yeah, you, this is the final slide, um, Mayor. So yeah, Mayor, I, I move that we allow. I move that we allow the pre presenter to continue their presentation. I am just following the ed the edits that was given to me by the board. I on understand, our but this is. This is going to the public, and it's unfair to Miss 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 Miss. Get, I Ms. move. Ms. I made a motion. Is there a second? To allow uh, my motion is to move is to allow the presenter to present uh, finish presenting their presentation to the community. Is there a second? Hearing none, let's move on. Thank you, and I'm essentially done, Mayor. So this is the last Catalyst project. I'm happy to answer questions now. All right, any questions? Ms. Gilliard, you're in the queue. Um, I just want to um, thank um, Pond and Company um, for putting all of this together and more importantly, to be open to uh, listening to the community and, um, and all of the, um, the extra effort that they went through to make sure that everybody's voice was heard. And I think that they've come up with an excellent product and I know that I'm pleased and, and many of the, uh, the people in District 4 are pleased with this project. So 
I just hope that it could be jump started and, and get off the ground much quicker, but you never know what will happen. But at least we have something excellent um, that we can refer to. So thank you very much, Mr. Corey, you, your company, your staff, you did an excellent job. Thank you for Councilman. It's been a fun project. I'm in Gilead, uh, Council Member Khalid. Hey, thanks so much. Um, it, was a, it was a great presentation. What is, what is the, what is the financial ask on our part? And and like, I understand this is like a multi-year, long-term project, but like, what, what would what what sort of financial, um, you know, what are we what are we going to be asked to to do specifically around like the roundabouts and the hawk signalization? And just sure. absolutely. So as you know, a lot of the land is, is privately owned. How do you, you utilize public infrastructure to incentivize redevelopment? So, you know, there's a couple of short term, I say short term, but a couple of catalyst projects we think are important. Um, one is the roundabout that at, at the intersection. Um, the other is thinking and beginning the feasibility study and analysis of looking at a trail connectivity um, and uh, both of those really reside. I think there's partnerships with the city of Chattahoochee Hills. Both of those really reside. I think are, um, the city of South Fulton can champion those now. And mm -hmm. it's up to the discretion of how and the availability of local funds. You know, we always advocate for local dollars if, if available because it can accelerate the project. Um, and beginning now versus waiting, even if it's just designing the plans or looking at them because um, we want to make sure the city is positioned well if additional infrastructure dollars come down the pike, whether it's through uh, the Georgia Transportation Infrastructure Bank. We don't, you know, down the road, there could be additional COVID relief dollars. There's just a lot of things. We want to make sure the city is positioned well. And so that would be our, that would be my case or argument for um, advocating for those. And there's some very high level dollar items in there, but we've not gone into in-depth analysis. That's really, I think the next step is looking at the feasibility. And, and estimating those out in a much more detailed approach. And so as a follow-up question, is there a specific financial commitment we, we need to make in 2021? And if you don't have that answer now, um, I mean, if you have an estimate or a timeline for when you might have that answer, that would be great. I, I'm, I'm, I would always love you all to commit in 2021, but I, I, um, so I think there are things you can do right away. Um, and I just, uh, but that's not really within my purview. So I'm happy to advocate for that, but I don't want to, uh, I'm not privy to all the capital improvement plans and programming yet. So we have been working with uh, community development department to kind of think through that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Council Member Khalid. Uh, Council Member Gums. Uh, good morning, and thank you for your presentation. I, I think this is absolutely fascinating. I had the opportunity to actually visit an art and cultural space that's new in Chat Hills, that's not far from South Fulton, um, and I definitely can see the potential where you know this can go, especially for creatives in the area. Um, but I did notice that you all are establishing a task force that is suggested between Chat Hills and South Fulton uh, for the arts and culture. Um, I was thinking about similarly doing some type of legislation in regards to that um, with the same regarding possibly Wolf Creek and programming around that area. Do you know how far along in the establishment of this task force has it been established? Um, it has not been established, yeah. Okay, um, so, yeah, I'm sorry and is that something you. that we can do interchangeably um, with two cities as well as part of this? Absolutely. So one of the things we really see is that that's probably the next step too from a from a grassroots, I say grassroots staff time and advocacy effort is to build that task force. It has not been done. It has been discussed at a very high level with the project management team and kind of mentioned. Um, we planted the seed um, with several members in both communities, but I think that's certainly something that there's a champions now uh, to move that forward. So you're at the outset. So I'd say go for it. I'm, okay. I'm a big advocate for that. Thank you for that. It's good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Council, Council Member Gums. I don't show anyone else in the uh, queue at this time. Uh, so, Mr. Clerk, next item, please. 
Next item. Item two, Washington Road Pedestrian Safety Audit by the Atlanta Regional Commission, CDRA. Go ahead. Jared Lumber, please. Yep. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, can you bring up my presentation? All right. Yeah, one moment. Okay. Uh, just to kind of give a, a quick background, um, this was one of the other, uh, what we call our community development assistance program projects uh, that was awarded um, in 2019 that we wrapped up earlier this summer. Um, I presented um, briefly um, earlier this summer on some of the existing conditions and data assessment. And he, today I'm gonna be showing um, some of our final recommendations. Um, so if you wanna just advance to the next slide, can you get a chance? All right, um, so the project goals of this project was really to look at the Washington Road corridor um, going from Roosevelt Highway up to Commerce Drive and provide some recommendations for some short-term transportation projects and then also long-term transportation investments to the city staff to really look at how to improve pedestrian safety along that corridor. And you know, this pro also provides a framework that city staff can do for other corridors within the city of South Fulton. So if you wanna to go to the next slide. Uh, just to, if you haven't been on Washington Road, it is a four lane um, segment of roadway. Uh, carries a lot of truck traffic, much higher than the regional average. Um, 12 lanes or 12 foot lanes in both directions um, with also not a center turn lane. Um, and then there's also only sidewalk only on one side of the street. So next slide. Um, one of the things we did do in February was we had walked the whole corridor um, on both sides of the corridor. It did a detailed sidewalk inventory. Um, in the full report that's available, there is actual point data of all the different issues, but this gives a generalized of where sidewalks are in good condition, where there's some cracks, but it's still a functional sidewalk, where there's some significant deterioration or impediments in the sidewalk, such as um, where they replaced a fire hydrant, but didn't and cut out the sidewalk, but didn't replace the si re remaining sidewalk area, or where there's also drainage issues where the sidewalk is mostly washed away. Um, on the eastern side of the corridor, there is uh, not only a little bit of sidewalk on the northern edge near Commerce Drive, um, the rest of it does not have a sidewalk. Um, that also in the area at the southern <laughs> end of the corridor, that is where the new Atlanta Job Corps facility is under construction currently. And that will add a lot, a lot of new potential pedestrians on the corridor, but that area also doesn't have a sidewalk as well. So next slide. So our brief overall project recommendations. Um, one, to look at how can you install crosswalks and signalized crossings a lot at the key points on the corridor. And I'll show some examples what that would look like. Um, add more bench, benches and shelters for transit stops. Uh, the city of South Fulton actually has done a good job of adding benches um, and trash cans um, that are branded with the city of South Fulton logo um, mm -hmm. on the corridor, but there are some other areas where that those could be added. Um, this one's gonna be a little more expensive, but also work to install continuous sidewalks on both sides of the corridor. And then finally add pedestrian lighting, um, that, but that is also a common recommendation throughout the whole region, especially on these um, corridors in the suburbs. So next slide, please. Uh, so this is an example of one of the issues that we uh, identified. This is a pedestrian trying to cross to get to those apartments. Um, there is a MARTA stop on the other side. Um, and you can see that it's a, you know, a four lane seg segment. This, at this time when we took the photo, there was no traffic, um, but there is, it's really not a safe way to cross. And this was also the area of a pedestrian crash um, with a motorcyclist a few years ago was in this general area as well. Um, so next slide. So one of our recommendations is to install a, what is called a Hawk signal um, at this corridor area. 
at this crossing. Um, this, you know, is just only for pedestrians and it really helps them to get from both sides of the crosswalk or the sidewalk to cross the street in a safe manner. Um, you probably have seen these on a lot of different corridors in Metro Atlanta. They're becoming much more popular. Um, the cost is around $100,000. Next slide. Um, this is also an example of just some, some of the areas where, you know, repainting the crosswalks. Um, that was one thing that we've noticed that most of the crosswalks are faded or haven't, don't exist. This is in the middle of the corridor. Um, and this also shows what a potential road diet of adding a center turn lane and removing, um, making it only two lanes or one lane in each direction as well. Um, and that would also free up space to install some sidewalks. Next slide. And finally, there is actually a really interesting project um, that the Georgia Department of Transportation is proposing um, to do a roundabout at the um, southern end where um, Washington Road terminates with um, Roosevelt Highway. Um, this is what this roundabout will probably end up be looking like, probably maybe not with the landscaping in the center. Um, and you know there will be some sidewalks, but um, this will add, make it much more safer to cross at that southern end as well. Um, so next slide. And then, so the next steps for the city, these are our recommendations. Really one, to just go out and repaint the crosswalks along the corridor, especially on the sides where the side streets are intersecting with the corridor. Also look at the, you know, do some engineering to look at the potential new crosswalks um, and crossings and develop an implementation plan. Um, you know, the, also look at, you know, the funding opportunities for sidewalk installation. There are, you know, you know, maybe a potential new SPLOS um, votes. Um, I would not recommend applying to ARC just for um, funding to do this a sidewalk. It's, it's just not worth the time and effort for the amount of funding to do a sidewalk installation for the corridor. Um, also, just uh, go out and conduct, conduct some spot fixes for sidewalk repair, especially where the, it's damaged or there's a, just a missing um, kind of uh, panel of sidewalks. Also look at work with the city of East Point um, on the sidewalk and crossing improvements at Commerce Drive. You know, that's the Northern end and it's also one of the main crossings. Um, it's also the only spot on the North side that does have uh, signalized crossings for sidewalks. And then also, you know, work with MARTA on the bus stops improvements at the Job Corps facility. So next slide. And with that, I'll be happy to take uh, any questions um, that you may have. Um, there is a final report that I believe the city staff is, has available that um, they can provide to you um, that goes into much more detail as well. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Council Member Willis. Yes, um, I wanna thank ARC for their diligent work on this. This has been um, approximately a two year process. Um, this was, uh, I think the city of South Fulton was the first city in the South Fulton region to receive a CDAP, um, which was a grant that afforded us an opportunity to get the study done. This is a quarter that residents have consistently requested for improvement. Um, and uh, Richard, which was the former planner, um, he helped write this up and we used the Job Corps as a catalyst to get this grant and to get the study done. Um, so thank you so much. Um, I'm pleased and thank you for allowing the community an opportunity to participate in this process as well. Okay, thank you, Ms. Willis. Uh, Council Member Khalid. Hey, thank you so much. Yes, this, this uh, project looks awesome. Um, I have a very similar question to the last presentation. Uh, as a resident who's been waiting for sidewalks on my street to be finished for over 10 years, uh, what is the timeline for this project and what is our funding commitment for 2021? I would say there is no uh, current funding commitment. Um, this information will be provided to planning and public works staff that they can then use to update their capital improvement plans. Um, that would be probably a discussion for them to, you know, to determine what, when those uh, capital improvements could be added to, a, um, to be committed for. 
And is and is there a timeline for uh, right of way acquisition or? I, it looks like the design phase has been done. I'm I'm just wondering what the timeline is for this to be completed. Uh, there is no timeline. This is more of I would say a planning study, but then you know, hopefully, when you're preparing um, lists, project lists for the next BLOST or other future funding um, applications, that then the city staff can use this to um, that they know that the community supports this uh, type of project and can then add it to a capital improvement plan. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we go to Ms. Rao, I want, I want folks to understand that these presentations are possibilities of what could happen in a given area. If we accept these presentations, then the next step is to look at the issues of funding and land use and things of that nature. So it's very, very difficult for a presenter to nail down any financial obligation. That, that perspective is going to be on the city. So I just want to make that clear. All right, uh, Council, Council Member Rao, you are. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to uh, ditto what you just said because um, I think the way um, information is presented sometimes is confusing for the public. And so I think any of these projects, and it'll help us track as well to have a grid, whether it's in the design, acquisition, right of way, because it's basically a four phase process as. Mr. Uh, Valenzuela has uh, explained to us on a number of occasions so that we say, okay, we, we've gotten the first step to move this project along. We need to allocate X amount of dollars and have a real picture of that. And I think that's kind of what's missing. So when we talk about, you know, not having projects, you know, sidewalks for 10 years, well, some areas have been waiting for them 20 or 30 years. And so again, I think um, all those projects need to be listed in a way so it's as transparent as we can make it to the public, but they understand we at step one of a four phase process. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman Member Rao. Councilmember Willis, you're up again. Um, I would like to say that when developers come to our city and they want to develop, one of the things they look for is if there is walkability studies completed. Also, when we go for federal or uh, uh, state funding, um, we can't just go and say we want the funding. They want to see the studies to justify um, you know, why we are requesting for the funding to for transportation projects. Um, lastly, this is the oldest area in the city of South Fulton. So you can imagine how long this community has been waiting for transportation project upgrades. This is not about District 3. This is not about any specific district. This is about the city. You know, when people are driving through our city, they're not thinking about what district they're in. They want a safe, clean, and accessible city. Thank you. Okay, thank you all so much. Uh, Mr. Khalid, you're up again. Thank you so much. I just wanted to clarify the, the reason that I'm that I'm asking these questions. This this isn't to be combative, but I do understand that when our residents see these presentations, they then follow up and say, "Hey, I saw a presentation about sidewalks. Where what's going on with that?" So I just think that it's important that we make clear if these things are not in the budget yet for next year, or if they're not going to begin for a certain number of years. The reason I think that we've had so much consternation around old national sidewalks is because exactly as Dr. Rao said, we were not necessarily um, explicit in the beginning about how long these things actually take. And so I just want to do some expectation setting for our residents because they see these presentations and they get very excited and then they get frustrated um, if they think things are not moving as fastly as they thought they would. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mr. Khalid. And I think that is why we were making these uh, these comments so that the public can understand uh, that this is a design, for better lack of a better word, this is design phase of a longer phase. So uh, that's why we made those comments. Okay, thank you so much, sir. We appreciate you. Uh, Mr. Clerk, next item, please. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor and Council, item three, City of South Fulton's aerial ATL model mile feasibility study presented by Pond and Company, CDRA. 
Yes, Mr. Andrew Core will be presenting this item as well. Thank you, everybody. Um, again, uh, thank you again for the opportunity. Um, if you don't mind, once you get this full screen mode, we'll go to the next slide. Um, as you all know, you may be aware of um, the 2018 plan that was an LCI study. Um, it was completed and it looked at a number of different connections throughout the South Metro region for greenways and trails. Um, in 2019, the RFCIDs received another uh, LCI grant. South Fulton is one of the communities working uh, with the RFCID and Pond to develop um, feasibility studies um, and that'll help provide a roadmap for next steps and how to build this model mile. Um, so each of the communities, including South Fulton, identify an area where they would like to see their model mile. So if you go to the next slide. Uh, this is a slide that is very apropos to what we just discussed, you were discussing briefly. This is where we are right now. In 2018, you identified the network. Right now, we're looking at site analysis and concept design. That's very high level. That's probably a, a, a 5,000 foot view. We want to go to the ground view. You know, this is where you want to allocate your local dollars, next steps. And we'll talk about that at the end of the presentation. Next slide. Project goals. Uh, the project really runs from Enon Road um, to Butner Road. And I'll show you a map short, shortly. But it's really trying to connect the Wolf Creek multi-use trail to Butner. Uh, we want to use utilize unutilized open space and connect people to nature. Uh, and we also want to think about um, areas that can promote safety along the trail and then also finalize and develop a preferred model mile concept and really give you a, a guidebook for how to move forward. Next slide. A couple of different images of the existing corridors you can see today. The area that we really looked at um, primarily along the corridors areas, you can see top left Wolf Creek, you top right is Enon Road, and the bottom two sides are images of a long easement corridor. It's very wide. Uh, it's a Georgia, uh, it's a Atlanta gas easement and it's a very sewer easement. They're joint easements, but it is a wide one and we think is an appropriate location for a trail. Next slide. Um, these are the study areas. I know they're a little bit blurry, but at the bottom of the screen um, is really Enon Road. Kind of the bottom middle is Wolf Creek Amphitheater, and at the top of the screen is Butner Road. Um, and so we developed two different alternatives, um, both following, um, doing similar, um, you know, kind of generally following the similar routes, but doing slightly different things. Um, really, the, the major issue for this was how do we get under or through Butner and Enon Road, uh, Merck Road? which is the middle of the project area. These are both um, high, high speed roads and no pedestrian facilities right now. So our goal is really to think about or minimal pedestrian facilities, let's just say. So how do we kind of navigate those? So we developed a couple different alternatives working with the community and staff. And if you go to the next slide. Is it coming next slide? There we go. Uh, we did a criteria matrix. So we basically analyzed each of the um, um, each of the trails. They're both very similar in nature. Uh, they both connect similar neighborhoods and districts. Um, a majority of them are off road So this is a real opportunity to actually do an off road trail, a true greenway adjacent uh, to Camp Creek, which is a beautiful stream. Next slide. This is the preferred alignment. I've turned this. Uh, let's see now. I guess kind of. You know, not quite 90 degrees, reverse 90 degrees. Enon Road is to your left. At the very bottom of the screen um, is Butner Road, bottom right. As you can see, the trail follows the easement. Uh, we think there's a separate phase in pink along Enon Road. Uh, we, we understand there are some proposed improvements on Enon Road. We believe those can, these can be incorporated into that. We believe there's a great opportunity for a trailhead off of Enon Road. There's a current easement there. Um, this, of course, considers, you know, there's a lot discussions about Van Divers Lake and what happens with that development. This can be incorporated into that. Um, as you can see, the preferred alignment actually does has two different tunnels. There's a tunnel under Merck Road and a tunnel under Butner Road. Uh, we think this is the most feasible and safe alternative to get people um, through those areas. Um, connected down to a trailhead, which I'll show you images of shortly, um, just east of Butner Road, which is a floodplain area. Um, it is private property, it would need to be purchased there's a floodplain area that really is not at a, not a, the greatest place for development, but it would be perfect for a trailhead. Um, I will also tell you that 
this is a great model mile because if you go further west, there are opportunities and ways to think long term about how to get to the Chattahoochee River. And if you go further east, this will follow towards a Camp Creek Marketplace, following the easement. So these are a lot, a number, uh, both um, a great locations go either direction. Uh, next slide. This is just an example section. I thought it'd be great just to show the image of what this easement looks like. Um, there are areas of wetlands. Um, there are areas that are not wetland. Um, so those have to be considered as well. But here's an example where it's more of a wetland area where you have to institute a boardwalk. Uh, next picture or next slide. Here's a couple of examples of just what you might see on the trail. We're advocating for a concrete trail and where needed you'd have a boardwalk section that would navigate through the wetlands. Um, and on the right hand side is an example of a tunnel. Uh, this tunnel is actually for the Big Creek Greenway in Alpharetta, um, if you off of underneath Windward Parkway. Uh, this is a much larger tunnel that would be needed for either Butner or um, uh, Merck Roads. But uh, and if you ever travel up that direction, it's under construction, you can see something in real time um, and, and, and it's very beneficial to see that. But we think that's a, an adequate solution. Next slide. Finally, we, we created several images. Um, this is the Butner Road Trailhead, the shops. So we're literally looking um, west, for lack of a better word. Um, the shops at Camp Creek are off to your left. This is a lower area um, below Camp Creek that's really kind of in a floodplain area, but we think it's a real opportunity to do a parking lot, signage. Uh, there's a restroom pavilion opportunity at the higher end. Um, this would be a great access point off of Butner Road into this area. Um, so we think there's some real opportunity for this area. We get land acquisition is a requirement, but I think it has a lot of potential. Next slide. And wherever you put the trailhead, this is just an image of what you can do, thinking about signage and wayfinding and placemaking with public art. This would be really kind of a very special place, very cool place. Uh, next slide. Another example. You're looking at the shops, at the shopping center up to your, in your distance, and that little red roof you can kind of see is kind of in the hidden. That's kind of where the restroom would be potentially. So it's outside the floodplain, but um, accessible to a number of different people. So again, um, kind of a cool idea. We think it really uh, generate a, a lot of excitement for everyone. Next slide. All right, let's talk about costs, right? This is the brass tax. Uh, the reason is um, Ian Road to Butner Road is $11 million. I have a very detailed cost estimate that I provided. I can provide to staff, but understand this is soup to nuts. This includes construction costs, right of way and potential easement. This considers mobilization fees for uh, construction. This considers utility relocations and adjustments. This includes a 20% contingency fee, along with the fees you would typically pay for design and engineering. And when you're on site, you typically have someone who's doing construction engineering and inspection. So I wanna to say to people, this is a very conservative estimate because we're working at a conceptual level. The goal would be to refine this and bring this down. You have to remember this includes the cost of two different um, tunnels, the cost of trailheads, public art, a restroom pavilion, I mean, so it includes everything. So when you see this, you say that's a big number. It is a big number, but we wanna be, we, wanna, we don't wanna hide any of the cost and we wanna make sure you're adequately thinking about this. Once you go into design engineering, which is the next phase, you can really refine this and begin looking at how you pay for this, how you allocate, who your partners are for additional funding sources. And then Enon Road uh, is a separate trailhead. But again, I think these costs are very conservative um, because if you go to the next slide, we've tried to give you some implementation strategies. First and foremost, if you do this with local funding, you're gonna save time and money. So I know that's a question, how long will this take? Um, you know, if you started tomorrow, you could do this in three, you know, in probably three years if done effectively and efficiently. Um, you have to think about a lot of permitting and the core, especially when dealing with wetlands and floodplain. Um, Eden Road and Butner Road have existing improvements already being planned for. So if you take those into account and plan for these trail segments as part of that, or thinking about that, that will reduce costs and kind of make these projects more efficient. Um, right of way and easement can be reduced using third, you know, third parties, the conservation fund and collaborating with local landowners. A lot of this is floodplain, so it reduces the cost potentially of acquisition because it's not buildable. Um, considering public private partnerships for land acquisition and the materials and costs can be refined. 
So I wanted to give you guys the whole number, but understand that this can be really broken down and allocated and addressed in certain different ways. Um, so I think that's my last slide. Oh yeah, one more funding strategies. People are asking how to pay for this. Um, I would say, as I mentioned before, you're piggybacking on other planned projects. That helps. Use local sources. I would highly, you know, you think about T SPLOS or SPLOS. And here's the other thing: we want to begin designing the trail now. So even if you say, hey, you know, we, maybe it's two years out before we have to get construction dollars, do the trail design now. Um, because you want to become funding ready. You don't know what's going to happen after COVID. Right. All right. So thank that's you the real idea. So thank you. I'm done. Thank you very much. Uh, Council Member Gums. I'm in the queue. Sorry about that. Um, so again, this is my, I don't know, probably about 10th time hearing this. And, uh, you know, I, I'm excited and I love where this is going. And I know that we have been talking with staff, um, especially with, you know, economic development um, that is, you know, wanting to come to the area about, you know, how we can connect that. So I'm really excited about it. What I am particularly interested in hearing is the feedback you got from some of the public engagement hearings that you had this summer. Um, how was the response in regards to that? Well, it was very good. Um, you know, we kind of had COVID, <laughs> so we had um, it, we tried different ways to engage with folks, and we we had a generally a good response. Um, this uh, the focus really was um, virtual, so instead of doing an overall meeting, so everyone from all the seven cities could come, we focused on each individual community. Mm -hmm. That's a very good approach, um, especially in the last public meeting, we had a lot of people who lived in and around the neighborhood, and who were very excited about this. Um, uh, they see the real potential uh, for Wolf Creek. They use it already. They use the trail. They have the library down there. Uh, they continue seeing this. Um, you know, there are a lot of questions, as I mentioned. Okay, well, how do I get to the Chattahoochee River from here? You know, what's the next phase of that? And certainly, so, it's a long-term prospect. But um, people are really interested in seeing that connection. Um, and really, we're concerned about high speeds. Uh, I say high speed, but you know. There's no pedestrian facilities on Butner Road right now. I know there's plans for expansion. Um, well, we walked through that a lot. People really uh, like the idea of the tunnel. It gets the people move more efficiently. It's safer. Um, and uh, so I think people are concerned about safety in those areas, but also saw the real benefit of Camp Creek because it's a really beautiful river and a tributary. Yeah. So also to one of the things about the beauty of the area is that it's very heavily wooded trails and yes. bike routes mm -hmm. are very popular. Um, and especially with, you know, off off the road vehicles. Um, and I wanted to number one inquire about designs of the trail. Is anyone thinking about maybe solar lighting um, that can be considered to illuminate the area at night? Sure. Because I have noticed a lot of um, residents are walking, you know, the trails at night and things of that nature. And then also, too, we've been working with, I believe it's Georgia, so Georgia Southern in regards of trying to, um, I guess, cut, close off some of the trails in regards to not having the ATVs or um, have them coming and destroying the trails. And have you all considered that aspect of the off-road vehicles that have been um kind of using our trails and things of that nature just to consider the public safety of the pedestrians because that is a very big problem. We have a lot of trails um, throughout, you know, District 2 and District 1 um, where people are using these ATVs and coming onto the existing walking trail. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say I was at Rockdale River Trail in DeKalb County and you can see evidence of that even more on the hard surface trails that they're, they're ATVs at times. Let me start with my, your second question first. You talk about public safety. I think it warrants a really good discussion as you begin building out your trail network about how you, and this is, you know, we include um, at least some costs for safety concern, safety elements, right? Um, how you think about, um, you know, blue lights, how do you think about access off and onto the trail? That's really important for emergency management vehicles. So we consider that as well. Um, really thinking about operations and management from a safety perspective. You know, do you create a, you know, a, a police boat? portion of your police force that uses bicycles and manages the trail. How often and frequently do you observe it? So a lot of this is about operations and thinking through that. Your advantage is you have Wolf Creek Amphitheater there. You've really focused on developing this area. So as if you develop more people and come into this area, 
you're going to see, uh, I think, uh, less of concern with ATVs because you're going to see more economic development. So it's really a management thing, I, I would say, and something that begins early on with collaboration with um, public safety uh, from that perspective. In terms of lighting, we have this question comes up in every community. It's a very good question. It's really how you see the trail. Is it a park, which really is dawn to dusk, um, and you, or is it really seeing as more of a transportation movement? Um, and there's a lot of different avenues. So first and foremost, solar lighting, absolutely. Uh, right now, the cost we included includes lighting for the trailheads, does not include lighting along the corridor. Um, it's heavily wooded, so solar is difficult down there. And we're, we're absolutely advocating for, we love lighting if you think it's, if it's gonna be important to move people through there. Um, I will tell you that a long term, this is part of the partnership conversation. As you see Van Divers Lake property and the areas around it redevelop, that's where those partners come in and say, you know, this may be a good time to actually install lighting on the corridor. Um, the other opportunity we can do is, is you plan for trails is, hey, why not? And we, we've often, we've seen this, the, the Beltline does this. You put in conduit now. What about the other one? Um, so, so that you have the ability later on to modify up, up, you know, up light, up fit of the corridor. Um, you can do that for utilities as well. If you want to run open conduit for utilities and then sell those, uh, that conduit back to utility companies, that's a way to generate money. You know, should it be an option? So there's ways to think about long-term utilities and lighting on this corridor. Generally speaking, we've treated this as a linear park, a park space, so we did not include lighting along the corridor. But as it becomes more developed, you'll see segments of this corridor where you're probably going to want to have lighting, you're going to want, there'll be amphitheater spaces and park spaces. <clears throat> things that'll happen long-term. Thank you, Andrew, I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Before I before I go any further, I want people to text me. Realize that when a council person speaks, the response, the time is saved for the response back and forth. So I just want to let you know that. Uh, council Member Reeves. Yes, uh, good day. Uh, I want to just say this is an excellent presentation. As the, our communities are dying for with these walking trails, and as a safety measure, uh, just to piggyback on um, Council Member. Uh, gum since Mr. Bassin about the lighting and y'all have already addressed that. Uh, but the another added safety measure is there a um, plan in place to look at uh, having cameras installed at the uh, entrance and exit ways that's tied into the local precinct uh, so that they can uh, definitely monitor uh, who's coming in and out. Uh, if something was to occur, uh, that would uh, spearhead in their, uh, um, let's say, investigation or whatever the case may be. Uh, so I just wanted to see, is there any, uh, was there any plan for having cameras installed either at internexus ways or uh, um, at some half mile um, increments on the trail? Uh, yes, Councilman Reeves, that's a great question. Yes, it's imperative that you have those cameras and you have those, those are considered as built into the cost of the trail. And we're considering those, again, high level, but we've acknowledged that the cost estimate and we'll acknowledge that in the plan itself. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Council Member Reeves. Uh, Council Member Khalid. Hey, thank you so much. First of all, thank you for your uh, transparency and financing. You know, that answered my, what was going to be my first question. Um, I love this plan. I love the tunnel. Um, so I'm just gonna rattle off a couple things because I know our time is short and you can respond or just make note of them. Um, going back to Councilwoman, uh, uh, Gum's uh, conversation around design. I know visiting uh, trails like the, the Brookhaven Trail and, and, and uh, the Silver Comet Trail there, have we thought about having separate lanes for bikes and scooters because, or, or making sure that the, the, the pathways are wide enough because, you know, that's, you, I've been on the Beltline and some other places and that's a, and that's a problem. Um, a, the, the Silver Comet Trail has these police call boxes. I think the New Brookhaven Trail has them as well. That, uh, and so incorporating that into the design that interfaces with our park rangers, which is my last point, because that is one of our most short staffed departments in police. And so as we're building out these trail systems, I think it's important that we are um, providing commensurate funding for our park rangers uh, to be on these trails. Basically, yes, 12 feet wide is the consideration of minimum. And we always get wide, you know, costs go up, but we always advocate for wider the better. 
we were planning for 12 feet wide through this area. Um, I would also um, we kind of echo your comment about thinking about um, access call boxes and a whole series of strategies for safety. So, especially in these areas that are very rural. Okay. Are you finished, Mr. Lee? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to go to Ms. Gilliard, then Ms. Willis, and then we're going to bring uh, Police Chief Meadows in and we're going to conclude the conversation. Um, I just want to thank you for the presentation. It is such an excellent idea. Um, I do know that um, the Riverbanks uh, project, there's a trail along uh, the Riverbanks that will end up uh, connecting to the uh, Chat Hills uh, Crossroads project and you know come down a little further and come across the street. And so the point that I'm trying to make is that there is, it appears to be an opportunity to extend uh, the trails, because I know with the Greenway trail plan, there were uh, three areas uh, included, but there is the opportunity, especially with four, District four and two, and one connecting to, to have some kind of connection on that side. Um, and I don't know how it would connect to this trail. And then from three, five, six, and seven, could be connected on, on that side. So I'm just, th this is just the beginning of possibilities and uh, it's just excellent. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Willis and then uh, Chief, uh, Chief Meadows. Um, actually, um, uh, District 3 will be connected to more than just three, five. We have, we share a road, Button Road, and that was mentioned in this presentation. So there's already a connection to District 2. Um, I want to tell you all, thank you for doing this. We have just um, gone through a comprehensive plan for our park planning. And one of the things that came out of that study, that plan is that residents in this city overwhelmingly want more walking and park trails. And I was surprised to see they wanted that more so than uh, a pool or aquatic center. Um, that came down at the bottom of the list. And so uh, I'm glad that there's a plan um, to bring that um, desire of our residents to fruition. And I just would like to remind all residents who are listening that this is a plan. Um, this is not where, this is step one. This is, um, although the presenter gave us some funding suggestions, um, this would help us seek additional funding and make cases for study, I mean, for funding, um, this is step one. And um, we don't have the funding allocated for this yet, but this, this, in order for us to get anywhere, we must have a plan and a concept and renderings. And so this is the first step that's gonna, that's gonna lead us to uh, bringing this to fruition. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Willis. Uh, Chief Meadows. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much. Um, uh, so I have a question, and it goes back to Councilwoman Gum's original point. Um, it's, and I heard you say that um, some of these things would be addressed in the secondary phase, but I think it's equally as important uh, that we have someone on your staff that's skilled in the implementation of septet principles during the design phase. Because as I watch, or as I look at some of your renderings, I'm seeing some vulnerable areas there that I feel that could be addressed uh, during the uh, design phase. So I guess my question is, do you have someone on your staff that's skilled at the implementation of septed principles? We do, we've implemented those on several trails. So we are, we welcome any additional comments you may have and we can share that with you and, and talk offline. All right. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, before we go on, ladies and gentlemen, let me just say one thing. You know, sometimes I know all of this is overwhelming to the public, it all sounds good. And, is everything that we want to do. Uh, but sometimes she's mentioned several things that come into play uh, that bring drive to cost down. The other thing, I, what I want to, add, want to let you all know is that even though you have a vast, a big uh, budgetary item, it does not preclude you from taking that budgetary item and breaking them down in phases. Give you a classic example. When I built Wolf Creek Amphitheater, I got half the money one year to put in contingency and I got the half 
the other money two years, two years later to complete the construction. So I just want to let you know those are also at your at your at your at your beckoning call. And one of the things is going to be that we're gonna to have to deal with is what's our what our priorities are. So I just wanted to uh, add that to it, okay? Thank you very much, Madam, uh, Mr. Clerk. Next item. Yes, sir. The next item is item four, CARES Act project plan update. Interim city manager, Ms. Tammy Sattler-Jones. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Thank you, Mayor Edwards. Good morning to you, C council members, staff, and citizens of South Fulton. Um, my name is Tammy Sattler-Jones. I am your interim city manager, and uh, it gives me great pleasure to be here uh, to participate in the uh, city council meeting in this row. I look forward to meeting each of you, those of you that I have not had a chance to meet, um, and certainly our citizens of South Fulton. I look forward to continuing the great things that we have done um, and continue to do on behalf of this great city. Um, and in regards to the CARES Act, I do not have a prepared presentation. However, I just wanted to give you a high level overview of, of where we are in regards to our project plan. Um, our uh, rental and mortgage assistance program, uh, that program has $750,000 allocated to it. Um, we are in the process of working with two qualified firms to administer the project on behalf of the city of South Fulton. Um, our CDRA uh, department is in the process of reviewing those and will make a final selection very soon. Um, intake applications are still open until this coming Friday, November the 13th. I would strongly encourage our citizens um, who are listening, if you know of individuals, if, even if it's yourself, if you would like to apply for the program, please do not wait until the last minute. Please get your application in on time. Also, um, we included a frequently asked questions um, information on our city website. If you have um, questions or inquiries about the program, I ask that you will please go to our city website and hopefully uh, those F um, AQs uh, will address any of your concerns. Um, we also have our customer service line av available for any of our citizens who may have um, concerns regarding technology limitations. Um, I uh, would encourage you to dial 470-552-4311. Again, that's 470-552-4311. Um, and we are looking at some options um, available um, for those residents, again, that may have some technology limitations. Um, our small business grant program, uh, we uh, have $500,000 allocated for that program. Um, we should have those applications available this week. We would encourage um, any of our small businesses who are interested in applying to please refer to our city website um, for uh, that lunch date, but we are again, hoping to get that out this week. Um, our Gladiator benefits payout, um, the city council implemented a hazard pay incentive program for essential high risk employees performing their job duties during this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we did our payout uh, this past Friday, November the 6th. We paid um, over 300 employees in police, fire, code enforcement. Um, we may have some other eligible employees uh, that will benefit from that but we are happy to say we were able to uh, provide that, um, that, that uh, program payout to those qualified uh, employees. And again, that was $379,000 that was dedicated toward that particular program. Um, our staff is continuing to work with the child care program for our essential personnel. We will continue to share information as that comes available. But Mayor, I just wanted to take this opportunity just to give you a high level overview of where we are. And if uh, any of the council members have any questions, I will be glad to uh, take those at this time. And I also have the staff on standby uh, who have been helping to lead these projects and they are available as well. Thank well, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Jones. In the queue, I see uh, Council Member Willis. 
Thank you for recognizing me. Um, Ms. Sally Jones, uh, is it true that our police chief, our uh, fire chief, and their top uh, commanders did not get hazard pay? Yes, the police chief did not get hazard pay. The fire chief did not get hazard pay. We did not um, include any of our top management directors into the hazard pay. That was strictly for our uh, frontline staff. Well, um, and, and so I, I would, you know, is there any rules or any laws to say they can't do it? Because they are frontline. I mean, Chief Jones was out in the community, um, you know, helping us address food insecurity. They have been at our beck and call when it came to testing. They have been frontliner and our police chief was a victim of uh, COVID-19. I won't say a victim, but he he was impacted. And mm -hmm. so to say they're not frontline, um, I, I just don't agree with that. Also our IT, our IT staff, they also have been frontline because if anything that happens with our IT, um, they have been in the office, answered our calls. Is there anything in the policy or in the rules that say they can't get hazard pay? Well, the policy that was approved um, specifically laid out that high risk employees are those that have direct contact with the public. And some of those individuals that you name may not, they may have been working here physically in City Hall, although we are closed to the public. Uh, they may not have had direct contact to public individuals. But I will certainly review the policy again. And if there is um, a directive from this council that you would like to add those employees, I can bring that, that information back to you. And well, I would like to, I would like to definitely, you know, take a look at IT because they may not have had direct contact with, um, with the public, but they have had direct contact with us and we have had direct contact with the public. Um, mm -hmm. It's our police chief and our fire chief definitely has had direct contact with the public. So to leave them out of hazard pay, I just really think that's, that's unfair. So if you can look at that and um, I would appreciate it. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ms. Willis. Uh, Councilmember Khalid. Hi, um, Ms. Sadler Jones. Welcome to South Fulton. Um, thank you. Yeah, I hate I hate to to make another request. I, I know this is a is a small pool of money, but I am actually concerned about the small businesses. I know that application was supposed to be uh, it was supposed to go have gone live last week. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering. I feel like five hundred thousand dollars will will be gone in a week. Yeah. Okay. Is there any way to increase that budget? I mean, I know that in order to do that, we'd probably have to take money from someplace else. But but we do have a lot of small businesses that are that are suffering. Okay. Um. You may recall we received four point one million dollars. Um, we did re uh, recently, uh, within the last week and a half or so, receive the additional $2.58 million that we were waiting for, for from uh, Fulton County. Um, I mean, it is a limited amount of funds available. Um, we've allocated, you know, the $40,000 to the child care program, as I mentioned. IT infrastructure security was one, uh, $188,000. And our education pods for virtual learning was $137,000. Um, not to mention our uh, sanitizing and protective barriers, things that, that we're gonna try to do here within our building to um, help, help keep people safe. Um, that's $900,000. And of course, uh, we do have some money allocated for payroll reimbursement for public safety, which is 1.2. So council member, um, everything is pretty much allocated for at this time, but I can take a look at this and try to come up with a recommendation and work with our staff to see um, as far as the applications that we uh, will get in for the business grant, if that, uh, may be beneficial for us to take from one other area in order to put some additional funds there. 
Anything you can do. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Khalid. Uh, Council Member Rao. Um, I, I agree. I think the need for small business relief is should be a priority. Um, I know we'll be working with Parks and Rec. Is it possible to look at those pods while supported? You know, um, I'm not sure about the implications of bringing um, folks in the building. Mm -hmm. And so have we, I mean, that might be an area okay. for, to, for further exploration. Okay, all right. All right, thank you, thank you, Ms. Rao. Uh, Council Member Gums. So um, I do know that um, we had legislated some uh, help for businesses for COVID um, through the Economic Development Department. I believe it was about 250,000 of cost savings that we were going to help with businesses that would be um, suffering through the, uh, I guess, part of the COVID um, crisis. Is it possible to um, look at that those funds as well to add to those businesses, or is this five hundred thousand just from the CARES money that we received from the county? Yes, the five hundred thousand dollars is strictly just from the CARES Act money. So, is it possible that we can probably merge those two programs? There might be something that um, you know that was an additional two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we allocated to help the businesses here in South Fulton um, during the pandemic. Maybe that is something that we can add to that pot. I'm not okay. sure, but that might okay. be something you can talk with our economic development director about. Okay, I will. I'm not familiar with it, but thank you for uh, making bringing that to my attention and I will talk to Mr. Pike about that. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll close with Council Member Willis. Um, Ms. Sally Jones, I know there's a time frame on when all this money has to be expended. So um, I, I would ask that you bring back to this council. Um, and I know, and I think the time frame was like by December 31st. I'm not sure. I have to go back and look, but I would ask that you bring back to this council all of the recommendations. I also would like to throw in one category that is very important. And I think it's more important than, um, than anything. And that's... Uh, the living assistance, the rental assistance. We have a lot of people who are being evicted out of their homes as of December 31st. So mm -hmm. I would ask that you look into, um, you know, adding additional monies to the rental assistance and bring a recommendation back for rental um, to see if we can reallocate any additional funding to rental assistance uh, businesses. The, the police chief, the fire chief, what it would cost to pay them out for hazard pay and then um and the park cards okay all right and i, I did not mention uh, earlier that um in regards to the rental assistance we're looking at uh trying to do a equitable su subsidy of approximately twelve hundred about i'm sorry twelve hundred dollars uh to be distributed fairly to those individuals uh that qualify uh, for the program so i wanted to make sure that i said that that was going to be twelve hundred dollars Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, Ms. Willis. Uh, Ms. Sandler Jones, uh, we got two months to spend this money. Yes. Whatever whatever we need. I don't know what the rules are going to be <laughs> in terms of Fulton County because they had to approve everything mm -hmm. in terms of going back and amending certain things. Mm -hmm. But we need to move on, on the council people's suggestion as fast as we can. Okay. Uh, the other thing I would say is I want our communications department to make sure that there is enough information out there that people know what we're doing, they know how to apply. Because one thing I always hear is, well, we don't know nothing about it. We haven't heard anything about it. I wanna make sure that we do everything we can to get the word out so that people can, can participate in this mortgage assistance, this small business assistance and, and the, and the uh, child care program. So I would say to you, make sure that we get the word out everywhere. Yes, sir. We will get the word out. All right. At this time, if if I was, I would uh, accept the motion to go into executive session. I move that we go into executive session for personnel, real estate, and litigation. Second. Second, Mr. Mayor. Property moved and second. 
Uh, any any question, Mr. Yes. Mr. Clerk? Oh, yes. please. You have a question, yes, Mr. Yes, sir. Mayor, you just need to be sp uh, specific on who you want to to in executive session. That's it with the clerk. I, I will at, at, at the time. I will. All right. Thank uh, you. Okay. Thank you, Miss Miss uh, Willis. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Bay. Yes, uh, sir. If if I may, yes. uh, I just wanted to say real quick because you made a great point about communication. If we could possibly find out, since the money has to be spent by a certain date it would be great to do a city mailer with that information you just suggested, Mr. Mayor. That's, I think that our residents those, those, would appreciate that. Those are the kind of things I'm talking about, Mr. Baker. Okay. okay. Any okay. other discussion? Yeah, I wanted, I, I wanted to say it specifically for communications. Uh, I think that they would, look, they would look forward to receiving that. They would appreciate it. Okay. All right. This discussion is specifically to what the... Yeah, okay. Uh, any other discussion? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you so much. Any other discussion? Uh, let's vote, please, Mr. Clerk. Yes, this is a roll call vote to go into an executive session for real estate, litigation, and personnel. Council Member Ryle. Council Member Gums. Yes. Council Member Willis. Yes. Council Member Gilliard. Yes. Council Member Rees. Aye. Council Member Khalid. Nay. Council Member Baker. Aye. That motion was approved. And I, I, I was on mute. I yeah, six unmute. to one approved. Okay, let's go into executive session, if you if please. Just one council or all staff? Oh, everybody.